Good afternoon, Saitlanders. How are you? We trust that you are very, very well. Uh, I want to talk to you. Oh, firstly, let me say, I'm sorry about the lighting. I know that it's very dark uh, on this side. On, on this side. Um, but it's because of the bright light in this room coming from outside. Usually I have to close the curtains uh, so that the lamps inside the room, the artificial lighting, can kind of compete with the outside lighting um, so that it can try to strike a balance. But I'm a bit fed up with the dimness and the gloominess, so I've just left the, the curtains open over there and uh, so it looks all weird, but uh, I'm sure we'll survive. I want to tell you a quick story about something that appeared in Russia today. Uh, and indeed, yes, it appeared yesterday in Russia today. <coughs> and I put it to you that this exemplifies or epitomizes the, the anti Saitlanders, everything that Saitlanders is not, but it absolutely epitomizes the, the manifestation of the conditions and the circumstances in which Wimsina von Rensburg's prophecies might take place. The decline of the West, the corrosion of Christendom, the assault upon Christianity and the eventual crisis that comes out of that, cataclysmic crisis that we believe in. USA reveals LGBT-themed crest, crest as in the logo or emblem on their shirts, ahead of FIFA World Cup. The FIFA World Cup is taking place this year, highly unusually, not in the months of June and July, as it always does. But because it's taking place in Qatar, uh, in the United Arab Emirates, where it's so hot, they are holding it in winter, in their winter, as, uh, as far in their winter as they could. It begins on the 20th of November. The U.S. national team has shown solidarity with the LGBT community ahead of the Qatar tournament. The United States men's national team crest has been temporarily redesigned from its prior red, white, and blue colors to instead incorporate a rainbow design in a move designed to show solidarity with LGBT issues ahead of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. However, the new crest won't be displayed on the team's jerseys, but rather at its training facility at Al Garafa Stadium in Ar Rayyan. The tournament in the Gulf State, which is due to kick off on November 20, has been hit with a torrent of criticism from various human rights campaigners, many of whom have stated their opposition to perceived discrimination against LGBT individuals in the host country where homosexuality remains illegal. <clears throat> in a bid to show its support, US team chiefs opted to make the move with images of the design filtering out of the team's base on Monday, being yesterday the 14th of November. Speaking after the unveiling, Neil Buter, chief communications officer for the team, told the Daily Mail that the rainbow crest plays an important role in the fabric, the very fabric of US football. Our rainbow badge has an important and consistent role in the identity of US soccer, he said, as part of our approach for any match or event, we include rainbow branding to support and embrace the LGBTQ community, as well as promote a spirit of inclusiveness and welcoming to all fans across the globe. 
As a result, locations that we will manage and operate at the FIFA World Cup, such as the Team Hotel, Media Aries, Areas and Parties, will feature both traditional and rainbow U.S. soccer branding. <clears throat> the move by the USA team is the latest act of defiance against perceived human rights abuses in Qatar and comes after FIFA sent a letter to each of the tournament's 32 teams in which it implored them to concentrate on the football. However, the wide range of activism which has been apparent in advance of the tournament appears so far to have fallen on deaf ears and seems almost certain to be raised on numerous occasions throughout the event. USA will play Wales in a Group B clash on November the 21st ahead of further games with England and Iran. <clears throat> okay, the first thing to say is I researched this this morning. Uh, the rainbow flag, apparently there have been many versions of it since it was first designed in 1978. But the consistent version from 1979 until now has been red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet, missing out the traditional rainbow color of indigo. However, however, the USA, in, in an act of anguished political correctness, has added another color, not indigo, but brown. And apparently that is to highlight the LGBTQ whatever issues of people of color. So not, are they, not only are they they're being PC over LGBT, but that they're not forgetting to remember that it's even more painful for those who are not white. I'm surprised that they don't have a color, let's say pink for argument's sake, that is devoted to emphasizing the unique and peculiar LGBT issues and crises and challenges and obstacles of female LGBT, you know what I mean? So I think they should add another color. I feel that they've been remiss. I feel that they have not fully acknowledged the desperate state. So much worse than that of gay men, of gay women, by virtue of being women, because of the patriarchy. Don't you? <clears throat> On a serious note, guys, I want to forewarn you, whether you like what I'm saying or not, whether you believe that it's part of YouTube's, that it fits within the Overton window of YouTube's community guidelines, or not. I forewarn you that such a provocation shall not be taken lightly in the Arab world. Now there is no doubt in my mind that the puppet masters behind the Federal Reserve banking system, behind the challenges to gender in the world of sociology, in the academic world of sociology that began with a man called Franz Boas, Franz Boas, and his protege uh, um, Margaret Mead in the 1950s, and the assault upon traditional notions of role, traditional notions of place, and so on. In the Muslim world, this will not be taken lightly, and it will not be forgiven. And I, got, I lost my train of thought there. That the, the puppet masters of these challenges to conventional Caucasian Christian conservative values to the cause of every the, of 
everything that we've known and understood and believed for thousands of years, because there's a consistent core there. Even through all times of progress, there has been a consistent core. And it centers on God. And it centers on the idea of the, um, the Son of God. And it centers on God, the Son of God, the Word of God, all of those values, norms, and mores. We know what that core is. Even though at certain times in France, maybe women wore low-cut dresses. Even though at certain points in our history, alcohol consumption has been far more prodigious than at other times. Even though Renaissance art might be considered by some people a scandalous affront to Christianity. Even though there have been massive schisms over uh, orthodoxy versus uh, the Western Church or the Roman Church, even though within the, the Western Church there have been schisms over uh, Roman uh, conventions uh, uh, versus uh, uh, Protestant notions, even though successively there have been all sorts of fracturings upon fracturings upon fracturings upon fracturings, like never before in all of the history of Christianity within Protestantism, the most schismatic um, religious a persuasion ever in the history of the world. Uh, even, even Islam, which if you examine it closely, is not as simple as, um, as uh, simply Sunni, Shia, and Yazidi. Uh, there has never been anything in any religion ever as fractious as Protestantism. Not by a thousand. Factor. Factor of a thousand. Notwithstanding that, we could always point to the core things that we had in common. And so it was very easy for us to assimilate with one another. You know, in any society, be it, uh, uh, for instance, you know, the best, best examples are colonial societies because they're composed of, they're eclectic, they're demographically eclectic. People come from all over the show to build a new life. But... Irish Roman Catholics, such as my people, were very easily able to accept the influx of Protestants to Amanzim Toti or Mbogantwini, Athlone Park, that environment where we were the first settlers. My, uh, my, my grandfather was the first white baby born in Mbogantwini in 1899, if I have it correctly, or 1901, somewhere thereabouts. Um, and, and his parents were among the first 10 Irish families that settled there to, to begin the, the establishment of AECI, Carnock Fertilizers. Um, but when others came in, just as it was the reverse elsewhere, wherever you like, Westville, Queensborough, uh, 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 Beechwood, uh, sent wherever we had so much in common belief in one God belief in his son as our only savior belief in certain uh, uh, European norms and traditions and mores ideas of right and wrong there was no the Presbyterians and the Catholics had no 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 misunderstandings on that over the role of Mary. That's another thing. But for the most part, we could. Whereas it has been so much more difficult for, let's say, Indian and white, or colored and Indian. A brilliant example, if you know anything about <coughs> the region of, <coughs> um, of Durban, south, uh, south of Durban, the Bluff, uh, uh, Sapref, uh, Shell and BP, and that broader vicinity. Wentworth and surrounds. Or black and Indian. The enormous tensions that have always existed. We, we know what we believe in. And, and that has been assaulted. Absolutely assaulted. By the same people. And if you investigate this, you will find that it is the same people. Over 
not only, but particularly the past hundred years. And I put it to you that that the Muslims will be horrified by this. And they know it too. They know that it's deliberate. They know that it's coordinated. They know that it always feeds back to a central point. Always, 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 always. The fountainhead, the font of all of these destructions of traditional cultures is always the same place. They are going to be horrified by this. I put it to you that these puppet masters are doing this deliberately because they want to cause the crisis. In a spirit of Satanism, they desire the forces to collide and to destroy one another. And that's my little forecast, long-winded as it was. Guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and um, we'll speak soon. Cheerio. Bye-bye.